Hello, and welcome to Using Google Tools to Support Struggling Students. My name is Siobhan McManus, and I am a resource teacher from the Department of Exceptional Student Education. Today I will be sharing some tips with you on how to use Google Tools to support our varied learners. Today's learning goals for supporting struggling students are to make adjustments in Google Docs, make Google Slides interactive, learn how to make forms for a variety of uses, and finally making Jamboards for engaging activities. Use of Google Tools helps teachers to support students and therefore addresses universal design for learning. Although this is not a presentation on universal design for learning, I think it's a good opportunity to touch on the principles of UDL. When we think about our students, we have to remember that not all children learn in the same way or on the same day. Universal design for learning is a framework that allows teachers to plan for the varied learners in our classrooms. When using the Universal Design for Learning, we are able to provide multiple means of engagement, or the why of learning, multiple means of representation, the what of learning, and multiple means of action and expression, the how of learning, or how do students show what they know. As we look at the Google tools today, I'll point out what UDL principles are addressed. First, let's take a look at Google Docs. Although most of us are familiar with several of the features of Docs, with some simple adjustments, we can create materials that are more accessible for our students with disabilities. We can also help students who may have difficulty with the mechanics of writing and or written expression. With the use of hyperlinks, we can scaffold learning for those that may need more support or for students who want to learn more about a subject. Use of images and special characters may be helpful for young learners or students who need visual supports. In UDL, students are able to make adjustments on how the document looks. They can change the size of the font as well as the font itself. It also allows you to offer students the ability to write in a variety of ways. Typing, use of images to express themselves or to explain something, Special characters such as emojis, which can help students tell how they feel or to tell a story. And of course, use of voice typing can assist students who may have a physical disability or students who can tell a story or answer questions orally, but just can't seem to get it down on paper. So let's take a look and check out Google Docs. Here's a document that I took from Wikipedia. I copied some of the text so that I could work with this text with my students. As you can see, I can make it smaller or larger. And right now, this is how it came in. And what I see here is that it's very close together and it's a little bit difficult to read. So simply by highlighting the text, I can make the font larger and it makes it easier to see. I can also change the font itself because right now I'm in New Times Roman and I don't know about you, but I do not make my G's, if you look down here where it says light, I do not make my leads with that little squiggle underneath it. I also do not make my A's in the word Florida. I do not make my A's with what I call the little hat. So I want to make this text look like what I provide my students. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to go to the drop down next to the font. And I'm going to come to one called Lexan Deca. Now this looks much more like the way I write for my students and my students are writing. 
Another thing that I can do is I can provide more space between these lines. I'm going to highlight my text again. I'm going to come over up on my toolbar to the line spacing icon. I click on it and I am going to make it one and a half. So it's not single space, but it's not quite double spaced. That provides more white space for me while I'm working. But I still have some students who may have difficulty with that. I'm going to go to my spacing again, and I'm going to go to double space. This can be really helpful for students who, who have difficulty with tracking, or if there's a lot of crunched up print on the page, they may have trouble with that. So I find that this can be very helpful. Another thing that I like to show you is that you can use the dictionary that is built right into Google Docs. So if I come over and I see the word climate, and I don't know what that word means, I can highlight it, go to tools, go to dictionary. On the right side of my page, I will get the definition for climate. Again, I can come over, I can highlight a word, go to tools, click dictionary. And now I have the definition of rainfall. The next thing that I would like to show you is that at the bottom of the page, there's a, a little button called explore. If I click on explore, and I pick something from my text that I would like to explore, I'm going to take thunder showers. I'm going to click on that and copy it. I'm going to put it right in here, paste it. Oh, I didn't like that. So let me try that one again. Let me try that over. I've got thunder shower. I kick, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in thunder shower. And when I enter, it's going to take me to some web articles. So right in here, without having to leave my document, I'm able to go out and get information from Google. I have different articles. I also have images. So if I was writing a story or I wanted the students to add something to this to help them with understanding, I could come in here and I could add in thunderstorms. So that's a really cool tool that a lot of people don't even know exists. That's called Explore. And Explore helps to get more in-depth information. So those are some things that we can do directly in a document. And now I'm going to scroll down to another activity that I have here. I'm going to just come up here a bit. All right, so I have some students and we are working on a project on fruits and vegetables. And I was able to go online simply by clicking on insert image. I searched my web, I found a tomato, but now I want to find a, I want to find an apple. I click on Apple, and here's a nice Apple clip art, and I'm going to insert it. It's very large, so I do need to make it smaller. And I'm going to move it up here with my other ones. And I'm going to put in the sentence, this is an apple. Okay, so I'm going to say two of these of these is a fruit and one is a vegetable. Let's learn about fruits and vegetables. If I click on this word, fruit, this is hyperlinked. When I click on a hyperlink, it takes me to a web page. And this web page is all about fruits. If I close that one and I come over to vegetable, the 
if I click on the vegetable, it's going to take me to an article that I have linked all about vegetables. So if you do not know how to do that, I am going to come over here and I'm going to write the word apple. I am going to go out to the web and I'm going to look up apple. And we don't mean apple computers. I want to go down to an apple apple. Wow. Apple, let's say apple food. And there's apple food. And here's a an apple. So here's an article all about apples. So once I find an app an article that I like, I'm going to go ahead up to the address up here in our browser. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click and copy that. When I'm done with that, I go back to my document. I'm going to highlight that word apple. I'm going to come up to the top to where it says insert a link. I click that link and it says search or paste a link. I'm going to go ahead and paste my link and apply it. Notice that now that word has turned blue and it is underlined. Whenever you see that, that means it's a hyperlink. I always like to check to make sure it worked. And sure enough, when I click on it, it takes me to my Wikipedia article. The next thing that I want to show you is something called voice typing. Once we've had the students identify, they've seen some information about what these different things are, and now in their own words, I want them to tell me about fruits and vegetables. Now, I have a student or two that when I say it's time to write, they shut down. They don't like to write. They have trouble getting their thoughts onto paper. Uh, they struggle with spelling. They don't write quickly. They have difficulty with the mechanics. So for those students, I might want to let them do voice typing. So if I go up to tools and I click on voice typing, I get a microphone. I'm going to click on that microphone to speak my words. Today we learned about fruits and vegetables, period. My favorite fruit is an apple because it is sweet and it is crunchy, period. Fruits grow on trees and they have seeds inside of them, period. So that's simply, I was able to get down a few sentences, whereas some of my students, it might take them a half an hour or an hour, or they may just shut down completely. So think about this for students who struggle with the written expression, who may have difficulty with typing, I'm, I'm not, excuse me, with handwriting, with typing as well, and consider using this because it's not necessarily the mechanics of writing that we're interested in. We wanna know what the students have learned. So in that respect, I think these are some very good, simple tools to use in Google Docs. The next tool that I'd like to talk about is Google Slides. Most of us have made the transition from PowerPoint slide presentations to Google Slides. Have you ever heard the expression, death by PowerPoint? Well, with Google Slides, we can make presentations more interesting, more accessible, and more engaging for students. Let's check out how we can make our presentations more engaging and useful. Closed captioning. Closed captioning is useful for students who are hearing impaired, English language learners, or who need literacy support in that it provides struggling readers with additional print exposure, improving foundational reading skills. Hyperlinks. 
There are three types of hyperlinks that can be used. Text hyperlinks uses a word or phrase to take you to another page, file, or document. And we showed an example of that when we just looked at Google Docs. An image hyperlink uses an image to take you to another page in a presentation, file, or document. A bookmark hyperlink uses text or an image to take you to another part of a web page. Here's an example of how to make a presentation interactive by using hyperlinks. I've been creating a presentation of around the world in 15 days, I'm getting ready for summer school. And I think this might be some topics that will be discussed. So I have gone ahead and started my presentation and I have lots of information in here. Here's my title page. And then I go to what I call my launch page. This is where I am going to create some hyperlinks on my page. And therefore, they will take me to other pages about specific continents. So where should we start? Let me first show you how this is going to work. When I'm on this page, and if I click on North America, it's going to take me to the page regarding North America. I used a hyperlink. And now I'm going to use a hyperlink to get me back to where I started. I then want to go to Africa. And as you can see, just like with North America, I clicked on the map and it took me to a larger page and map of Africa. So how did I make those? I'm going to go back out to my editing page. And the first thing I did was I made my launch page and then I decided all of the different continents that I was going to address. I went out and I got information on each one, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia. What I did was then I connected all of these pages by making hyperlinks. So I've already made it for several of my continents, but today I want to make one for Australia. I haven't done one for Australia yet. So I'm going to click here. I want to add a shape. In my shape, I'm going to make it a square or a rectangle, and I'm going to try to cover as much of that country as I can. The continent, excuse me. Once there, I am going to do a right click, and I want to link this. I want to link this to the page where Australia is, and that is slide number eight. You will see that I have down below it says slides and presentation. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go down to slide eight, Australia. Once there, I apply it. Now, when you look at this, I don't want this box showing. So what I need to do is highlight the box. I'm going to go up to my little beaker, which is my fill color. I'm going to click on it, and I want to make that box transparent. I also want to go to the border color, and I want to make the border transparent as well. So now, when I click off, I don't see that box there. However, when I go into the present mode, and I click on Australia, it takes me to directly to Australia. Now, I also have, whoops, let me go back to Australia. You will see that I have hyperlinked this back to my map. So it will always take me back. And you'll notice each continent that I touch, I can return to my map. Do a hyperlink inside of a presentation in order to navigate around the presentation.
Another kind of presentation that you can do would include Pear Deck. Pear Deck is an add-on that is built into Google Chrome. I mean, excuse me, into Google Slides. If you go to Add-ons in your upper toolbar, go down to add, Get Add-ons, and you will see Pear Deck. I have already installed it, but if I clicked on it, right here it would say Install. Mine says Uninstall because I already have it. I will be upfront with you and tell you that Pear Deck has basic features available for free. If you want all of the features, there is a premium charge, and I do not ever recommend, um, I don't ever want to recommend something that will cost you money, but you certainly have access to the free version. So when I look at this and I want to make a Pear Deck presentation, a Pear Deck presentation is a more interactive type of presentation. So if I click on Pear Deck, you will see I'm going to get a panel on the right hand side that has different choices for me. I can ask questions that are text, I can have multiple choice, I can have numbers, I can have things go out to websites. They can draw and they can drag. Just to give you an idea, here is their template library. They have a variety of tools for the beginning of a lesson All different interactive slides that you can use. They also have some for during the lesson. This is a great way to do things like summarizing what they've learned, whether they think things are true or false, how they feel. And then they also have different slides to use at the end of a lesson, like connecting. Um, how do they feel? How do they feel about that lesson? Uh, pretending that a student was absent, one of their friends was absent, and they have to explain. So these are some nice different types of slides that you can use. I'm going to just go ahead and present mode so that you can see how it looks. And when you are in a Pear Deck, let me go ahead and start the lesson from Pear Deck, I apologize. When you start the lesson, what will happen is the students will be given and it's going to be a second. So sorry. All right, it's going to go to Pear Deck. Try that again. The students will be given a code. This is taking a long time and I apologize. Okay, so we're having an issue. Oh, all right, there we go. Sometimes things get a little bit glitchy, just like everything else in the district. So the students would go to joinpd.com and then they will enter this code. So it will wait for students and at this point, I don't have any students connected. So you're going to see the teacher side. You'll notice that the background looks a little bit different than a regular PowerPoint or a regular Google slide. And I, it says that I am presenting. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to talk about around the world continents. Oh my goodness, you know what? It's been quite a day. The kids might not be feeling so great. They might feel great. But this will allow the students to circle. How do they feel today? Now they will have tools on their side that they can use, whether it's uh, markers, it might have little um, drawing tools, it might have things that they can move around. They can put some text in here about what did they learn from their homework last night. Think of a question that a class might, mate might have. And this is a great way. I love this kind of takes the onus off the student because you can have the student ask something that another person might want to ask. They can do some drawing or they can type about what they know about the topic. So here we talked about we have seven continents. 
Uh, we talked about a continent is a landmass surrounded by water. Um, you know, the, here's, you can check to see how they're doing. Do they understand what you're talking about? If they're confused or, oh my gosh, please stop, I need some help. So this is a great way just to keep tabs on how the students are doing. And there will be a little marker, there are dots that they can move around so the students are able to do that. Um, again, the Arctic is not a continent because it is a sea surrounded by ice and sea. And then you can ask the students, is that true or false? Do they wonder about that at all? And what do they wonder? They can answer that. Then again, we give some more information. We can have that, then we can have them say, did they learn anything interesting and how can they relate to it? Maybe they went to SeaWorld. Maybe they um, have visited Asia. They have an opportunity to do some reflection. Now these are all choices. None of these are set in stone. You choose which slides you want to use. So that's Pear Deck. And I really do like Pear Deck a lot for uh, those interactive activities that you're able to provide for students. Lastly, what I want to say about Google Slides is please, please simplify the text. Don't put too much information on your slides because we all know that if the students look at something and it seems overwhelming, the chances are they're not going to pay attention. So you want to make sure that we put in keywords or phrases that will help you. Uh, you know, you can always use the speaker notes in order to put down any more, any more information that you want to share with students. So that is Google Slides. And the next thing I want to talk about is Google Forms. Google Forms traditionally have been used to give quizzes, to um, do, you know, different types of assessments for students. But we can also do things like building background knowledge by using flipped classroom. Uh, we can do bell ringers, getting kids ready to learn, uh, can be a one or two question form. We can do images, which allow students who struggle with reading to use images. Um, it can be helpful for kids that need picture support. Uh, exit tickets, quick way to see what students took away from a lesson. It's also a good way to see what still who still needs help and who might be struggling. Let's go ahead and I'm going to bring over a Google form and we're going to take a look at some different types of questions or different activities that we can do. Now for the sake of saving you time, I decided to put a lot of these things into one form. So the first thing I did was I added a video because I want to do a little bit of a flipped classroom. I want to have the students see a video prior to the beginning of a lesson. They can do it for homework and it's going to require a few minutes. Once they watch a video, they're going to give a review. So in order to add a video, I want to come in here so I can edit. And I want to add another video. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the side where I have my options. I can add a question, import questions, add a title and description, add an image, add a video. I'm going to add a video and I'm doing a video on guide dogs. How do puppies train to be guide dogs? Here's Pip, that was the short animated one that I've already put in. So we're going to say that I have looked at this and I feel this is appropriate for my age group, my students, no one's going to be offended. Uh, there's nothing objectionable in it. So I'm going to click on that video and I'm going to select it. Now it has come right down here and I'm going to say um, how to become a guide dog. And I know that's not the right title, but it gives us an idea. So I can come in. I've added my two videos. And now they have to pick one video 
and they need to give me a brief review. That's a very quick and easy activity for them to do for homework. They can do it when they come in from class, or if they come into class, you may have a couple of minutes that you want them to do something. Super simple, gets them going, ready to learn. And now I've got some different types of questions. Right here, I have added a video, excuse me, not a video, I've added an image because I have students who may not be good readers or they may be young. So all I've said is, what is this? And we are working on animals in my class and we talked about cats and pigs and dogs. So they've seen that print before so they can come in and make their choice. If I wanted to add another one, I could add another one and I could call this one a cow. And it's that simple. I'm gonna go down to a different type of question. And in this question, I said, choose the pictures that end in NG. So in here, I have gone ahead and I have added image, excuse me, I've added images and those are my answers. So I've done three different images. And then my next question, I've done different, I've done photographs. Again, I would go to images, just adding those images of what I want. So if I come in here and I want to add an option, option four, and I'm going to put an image and this image is going to have, I'm going to search Google and I'm going to say um, apples. And this time I'm going to put two apples. And I'm going to insert. And that's very large, so I'm going to push it down small. And that should be my option four. I don't know why that's not going in the right place, but we're gonna move on. Another type of question that I can do is describe why the Arctic is not a continent. And this will be a short answer. Choices are short answers, paragraphs, multiple choice, check boxes, drop downs, linear scales, multiple choice, and grid boxes. So I have a lot of choices there, which I also had up here. Multiple choice, multiple choice. And this was short answer. So I can change what type of question I want to ask. When I'm done with those, I've created an exit ticket. This is a great way to find out, was your lesson effective? Did the students get it? Um, what did they take away? Do they have any questions? Do you want help in understanding today's topic? And would they recommend it? So these are just some quick, easy things that you can do using Google Forms that can make answering questions a little bit easier, a great way to build in videos, and just makes it a little bit more engaging for students. The last thing that I want to show you, and one of my favorite tools offered in the Google Tools, is Jamboard. I have participated in trainings that have used Jamboard as the presentation platform, and it was really engaging. I've also used it in a variety of trainings that I offer, and have found that participants are not only engaged, but they actually seem like they're having fun. When you think about Jamboard, think about the four C's, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and communication. All of these can be used when your students are involved in what we call a jam. UDL, when I think about it, this Jamboard fits the bill. It's a great way to provide engagement for students. Some of the example I have to show you today show how students can collaborate. It's interactive, so for those who can't, just can't sit and read, the ability to manipulate and contribute is a wonderful, is really terrific for some kids. Collaboration. You can work on it as a whole group, small groups, 
or assign individual boards to students. It's interactive, so students feel that they have voice in activities. It's engaging, it's fun since it can be anonymous, and students can feel safe adding to the jam. Lastly, when we think about brainstorming, again, students can feel safe adding what they think. If it's, even if it's not exactly on target or what the students asked of the students, she can see or he can see what students are thinking and perhaps explain or rephrase what they want students to do. Students can also see what others write as well, and that may help clarify what is asked of them. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a jam that I've put together. Some of these pages I've made myself and some I have borrowed from other presentations. The first one that you'll see here is a welcoming ritual activity that I oftentimes do in my training. So I simply made three boxes and I added some icons and then I placed three questions. So my second question was, if you joined the circus, what would your, your circus act be? Excuse me. So I know what I would be. I know that I would be the lion tamer. And I can save it. And then I can just move it here. I can also put in a text box. And maybe I'm going to be in the clown car. Or maybe I want to add a picture. I can add an image. And I'm going to go to my Google image search. And I'm going to say clown. And here I've got the little clown. And I'm going to insert it. And there are three quick, easy ways that I was able to answer and participate on that page. So I would go ahead and I would have people answer each of these questions. If a student doesn't want to answer all of them, you can ask them to pick two out of the three. So there's some flexibility in using a Jamboard. Up on the top, I have these arrows. So I'm going to go to my next jam. This one I borrowed from one of the workshops that I attended, and we were given a task in breakout groups. We were in a Google Meet. We went to breakout rooms, and each breakout group had four people. We were given a topic to discuss. Before we started the discussion, we first said what we were thinking. So I came in, and I was able to take some text. I was able to put a text box in, and I was able to type what I thought. Then, and everybody did that in their own box. We had our conversation, and we came up to consensus. Once we made consensus, we put it in the light bulb. And once we finished that, then we had to come back over to our spot and say, after the discussion, now I think. Because maybe my opinion has changed, or maybe I have swayed someone to, towards my ideas. So I like this activity because you work as a group, you come to consensus, and you still have that, what did I think at the beginning? And what do I think at the end? So this is a really nice snapshot for teachers to see how children are thinking, what they're thinking, are they on topic? I like this activity. I think this shows um, a really nice way of working together as a group. So that's a great collaborative tool. I also have students that might be learning how to sort. They might be learning their colors and I would just go ahead and I just made this simple grid. I put the colors and I just have the students come in and do their sorting activity. You can do this with anything. You could do it with vehicles. You could do it with um, any, anything you really can think of. You can do sorting activities. You could also do things like patterns. You could have students make patterns. Another activity that I really like is choose a picture. Okay, I'm gonna choose the boat because I love boats. I'm gonna make this big. Once I pick the picture, what do I think it means? 
Let's see, a boat. What is a boat? I'm going to put some text. Oh, the word? The word is boat. That's the word. I'm going to move it over here. Oh, I need to move this. It's a boat. And in my words, in my own words, what do I think it is? What do I think it means? Um, something that floats. And we're going to look up a dictionary definition. And let's just pretend that I've just done that. And my dictionary uh, definition says it is a vehicle that floats and people can sit in it. And I just made that up. I'm going to make this longer so it fits. And that's another kind of activity that you can do. And you could have any words. You can do words. You can do pictures. You can have students find their own pictures to define. So again, that is another activity that you can have your students. They can do it together. One could come up with a picture. One could tell you what it is. They could all come to consensus in their own words, and then they could look it up. Exit tickets. I love Jamboard for exit tickets. How would you describe what you learned today to someone that wasn't here? I'm going to come and get a post-it and I'm just going to say I learned some new tools today. I'm going to save it and I'm going to cancel that and I can put that. This is a great way for you to see what did your students get out of the lesson of the day? You can have all the kids putting in different colors. You could have um, them do just in teams. You can do this any way that you want. Here is another one. And the reason I showed you this is I want to show you how you can actually put this in this background in because this is static. This does not move. The students can't move it. Uh, one of the things here is you'll notice that whatever someone puts on the screen, they can move it around. They cannot move this background. So the way that you have to do that is, and the best way that I know, and I'm going to go to a new page, I'm going to come over to a, another Google presentation that I have participated in, and I was told I was allowed to borrow this. So I am going to come in. I really like this exit ticket. So what I want to do is I want to use my snipping tool and I am going to take that page and I'm going to file, save as, I'm going to call this bubbles. And I want to make sure that it's a portable network graphic, also known as a PNG or a ping. When I save it, and then I can close that, and I can close that. I'm going to go back to my Jamboard. I'm going to set the background. I click on set background and I come here where it says image. So I'm going to add my image. I'm going to browse my computer and here it is right on the top. I have my bubbles. I click on it. I open and give it a moment and it automatically imports into Jamboard. So it's that simple. So what you want to make sure is if you want to do a background image, go ahead and make your images in Google Slides. Then you're going to go ahead and use the snippet tool and you're going to make a PNG out of it. And then you're going to, it uploads automatically. So again, what's something that someone said? I can come in, I can take a different color. Um, Jamboards are fun. 
are fun and there are lots of ways to engage students. I would save it and I can put it there. So that is Jamboard and I, as I said Jamboard is one of my favorite tools in the Google suite and I hope that you found that this is useful. Uh, if you want to know more about Jamboards, there are so many great videos on YouTube that I highly recommend. <laughs> so if you want to know more about Jamboards, please feel free to reach out to me. So that's all about Jamboards. And then finally, I just want to say thank you all so much for your time to say this lovely day and I want you to know that if you have any questions about any of the Google tools to support struggling learners that you've seen today please reach out if you have any questions or you want to know more or if you want me to demonstrate one-on-one uh, -on -one with you how to use any of these tools. Again I'm Siobhan McManus with Exceptional Student Education and it's been my pleasure today and thanks again and have a fantastic day.